Every year, scientists around the world discover about 18,000 species that are entirely new to science. Animals, plants, fungi, protists, bacteria, every shape that life can take on this planet. That's actually not that much when you consider that there could be as many as 100 million different species out there, but the number of discoveries we make every year is less important than what they tell us about the world when we look at them all together. Each new mite, flower, dog, fish, or finch comes to our attention by way of many other little discoveries that led to it finally being added to the official attendance list of planet Earth. After all, every new organism has to not only be found, it has to be studied, compared, identified, and organized. That's taxonomy, the science of classifying living things and exploring the evolutionary relationships between them. And to celebrate the latest achievements in this field, as well as the birthday of the man who basically invented it, Swedish scientist Carl Linnaeus, every May the International Institute for Species Exploration weighs in on the most impressive discoveries of the previous year. The top 10 new species of 2013. Who made the list this year? Well, it includes a glow-in-the-dark cockroach, a monkey with blue testicles, and the smallest vertebrate on Earth. Hopefully, that got your attention. Yes, a monkey with blue testicles. We actually told you about the first species on the list last fall. It makes this year's top 10 because it's only the second monkey species to be discovered in Africa in nearly 30 years, and unsurprisingly, its species is in danger. Named C. lomamiensis, it was found by U.S. researchers in the evergreen forests of the Democratic Republic of Congo, which remain largely unexplored by scientists because of their remoteness and of the country's political instability. Despite its isolation, though, the monkey, known to its friends, as the Lusula monkey, is vulnerable and is hunted for meat. And the coloration, I mentioned, makes the males at least easy to spot. Their behinds, testicles, and everything in between are bright light blue. Not to be outdone, another new species can make itself seen in a different light. Literally, L. Luckei is a newly identified species of giant lightning roach, a cockroach that glows under fluorescent light. Found in remote areas in South America, the lightning roach owes its bioluminescence to fluorescent bacteria that live in its shell, and not coincidentally, the pattern it displays when it glows matches that of another poisonous beetle that emits light at the same wavelengths. This makes the lightning roach the first known species to use bioluminescence as a kind of defensive mimicry. But to me, it's just the first known species that looks a really lot like the Jawas on Tatooine. Am I right? This list also includes another canny mimic, a snail-eating snake called Sibid Noalamina. And no, I don't know how to pronounce these things. Found in the mountains of western Panama, it lives on a diet of snail slugs, worms, and amphibian eggs, and bears a striking resemblance to venomous coral snakes. But like many organisms on the list, its habitat is threatened, in this case by mining. Biologists are so concerned about the impact of mining in the region that they gave the snake a name that means in Spanish, no to the mine. Some species on the list haven't been identified until now, not because they look like other species, but because they've simply been overlooked. A new type of evergreen discovered along the coast of Madagascar, the pink-flowered E. petrakensis, turns out to be an important member of an ecosystem known as the literal forest. That sounds like literal. It is a literal forest, but it is also a literal forest, which is with an O and that means that it's on the shore of a lake or the ocean. A habitat that happens to be fast disappearing in Madagascar. Other species have been overlooked simply because of their size. The newfound Lilliputian violet stands only one centimeter tall and is found on a single plateau in the Peruvian Andes. The world's smallest vertebrate was discovered last year in Papua New Guinea, P. amanuensis, a frog that measures only seven millimeters. And while we're on the superlatives, the deepest we went to find one of this year's species was 3,400 meters below the northern Pacific Pacific, where the lyre sponge lives. Noted for its large harp-like shape and weird balls on the end of its branches, the lyre sponge is actually carnivorous, surviving on small crustaceans that it captures with hooks on its surface. For one of this year's top ten, though, it is way too late to talk about survival. A scorpion fly called J. ginkgofolia lived 165 million years ago in China, making its living by hanging out under leaves to catch its dinner. Discovered only recently in a fossil, it too had probably been seen before but not noticed. Its wings so closely resembled the leaves of the ginkgo tree that it lived in, many specimens had been mistaken for plant fossils. 
Humans and fungi go back together a long way too, but this next species poses a threat to one of humanity's greatest creations. In the mid-2000s, mysterious black stains began to appear on the famous 17,000-year-old cave paintings in Lascaux, France. The culprit was identified last year, a species of fungus named for the famous cave where it's running amok. O. lascoensis only started to flourish after workers treated the cave with another fungus, which O. lascoensis seems totally unaffected by. Finally, we have the internet to thank for the last species on the list. A few years ago, a tourist posted a picture he took on his Flickr page of a lacewing insect he found in a park near Kuala Lumpur. As it happens, a curious scientist in California came upon the photo and had never seen such distinctive wing markings before. After many, many emails and much worldwide collaboration, a team came together around the photo and realized it was a new species. S. Jade. You know, if I had more time, I'd share all 18,000 newly discovered species with you, but 10 will have to do for now. If you have a favorite discovery of 2012, or maybe a favorite way of celebrating Linnaeus's birthday, you can let us know on Facebook or Twitter or in the comments below. And if you want to continue getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe.